I want to talk about the surge of interest in AI. It is extending now from the public markets to the private markets. And joining us right now with more on AI's pathway uh, to investors, Jeff Lewis is the founder of Bedrock Capital. Good morning to you. Uh, Jeff, we've been talking, you know, every day about AI. We can't get away from chat GPT and the rest of it. Uh, so much of it's negative uh, in the sense of what's it going to do to jobs? Are we going to lose our job? What's going to happen? I want to get your, your thoughts on that. But I also think you're investing in this stuff because there's a positive outcome on the other end, or at least I hope so. Certainly believe there's a, a very big positive outcome on the other end, Andrew. I mean, as a starting point, in terms of the jobs question, think back to horse and buggy repair folks. What did they do? They learned to repair Ford automobiles. The world changes and, you know, folks have to change with it. They should be teaching every kid how to, how to prompt AI in schools. This should be mandatory curriculum. I don't know what they're teaching in the elementary schools these days, but they should de be teaching kids how to prompt. And on the other side of this, I think we're going to just see massive efficiency gains. But uh, the opportunities for AI, I think, for, for investors are actually quite non-obvious. We, ha we have sort of the obvious names like NVIDIA, but there's just a huge swath of non-obvious opportunities out there. Yeah, give me some examples of non-obvious opportunities then. Well, the non-obvious opportunities are the durable brick and mortar, uh, you know, meat and potatoes businesses that are leveraging AI to supercharge their offerings. So we're seeing this across sectors in the private and public markets. We're seeing this in sales and marketing with names like HubSpot uh, and uh, ZoomInfo that are integrating AI rapidly with their offerings in the private markets with sales and marketing. Canva has launched a text to image generator. That's a company I'm quite bullish on small investor in as an IPO candidate. We're seeing this in security, where you have names like Cloudflare, like Sneak, in the public markets rapidly integrating language, large language learning models uh, in, the, in the private markets with, uh, with, uh, with businesses like, like Sneak. We're seeing it as well in right. gaming, which I'm super bullish on. Epic Games, the creator of Fortnite, uh, is doing a lot with AI. So I do really think it is a major catalyst for, for the reopening of the IPO market. Is there IPO any market. argument, though, that this is going to become just completely commodified? Meaning, if every business is going to connect in some way to uh, large language models and, and generative AI, effectively, everybody should be, to some degree, catapulted. Or, or, but it, it, meaning, it's, it, 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 it's the same field. Everyone's, everyone will have it, no? It's all about two things. One is proprietary training data for the models. So whoever has the most proprietary training data for their specific <coughs> offering, I believe is gonna win. So if you're Canva, you have a tremendous amount of proprietary training data. If you're Microsoft, tremendous amount of proprietary training data. So I think that's one edge. The other edge, frankly, is a lot of the, these, uh, a lot of these uh, tools are only as good as the prompts they're getting. And so, Learning to prompt good, I think right. I'm sort of stealing a line from Zoolander here, but there was this wonderful, like, learning to read good line. Learning to prompt good is, like, is a, is a huge comparative advantage, and that's why I don't think humans are going away. AI is a tool that is making humans more effective, better at their jobs, but you have to learn to prompt good. So I, so I don't think it's commodity in the end. Can I, let me ask a different question. We were talking to the CEO of Sentinel uh, uh, Securities, uh, uh, Sentinel One, this morning, and, and the question about moats and incumbents, do you say to yourself, the big winners, as you just described, it sounds like Canva or Microsoft, somebody who's got data, that they win? Or is it that there is no moat because if you have AI, you can actually generate a startup that's demonstrably disruptive? Or is that impossible? Well, I think there's a few levels on which this works. I think one level is there's the core infrastructure plays like NVIDIA, like OpenAI, where we're invested at Bedrock. I believe they have obviously a pretty big moat. Then there's this whole application layer question. And, you know, at the application layer, I do think most of the value gets captured by existing players that have applications, that have data, that have a moat. I think you're going to see a flurry of generative AI uh, uh, private technology companies come out to the public markets over the next three, four years. A lot of those are going to be crap companies, just like right. we saw with the electrification wave. Uh, you saw a lot of crap companies like uh, Trevor. The, Jeff, what's, what's, where are the losers in this? What would you run away from in this moment? I would run away from, like, any thin application layer company. So there's a lot of heat right now in the private markets around application layer, I, application layer AI for legal, for medicine, for accounting. 
I think that's all great, but I think ultimately that application layer gets commoditized. I would run to existing technology businesses that have already moved to integrate LLMs into their offerings. Okay, here's a, here's a more complicated one. Um, if you were a student in college or maybe just graduating or thinking about going to grad, what would you try to learn? I know you said prompting. Is prompting a, a cool sort of party trick that works for a couple of years? Does it work for forever? It, what, what, would you, what would you tell students? I know st you talk to a lot of students. Well, everyone should be learning to prompt right now. I mean, that's, that's basic. Hard question to answer, Andrew. I'm going to tell you what not to learn. Do not go to law school, okay? I hope my lawyers aren't watching this, but I think uh, the legal field is in, is in big trouble. That is going to be one of the first to get disrupted by AI. I talk to folks who spend tens of thousands of dollars a week on legal bills. They're already using chat GPT to generate uh, complex contracts. I think the legal field is in for a lot of trouble. So I would, oh. I would not go to law school. That is, my, that is what I would not it's do. It's funny I don't because exactly a lot of people like to do. go to law school, not even necessarily to become lawyers, because it's sort of a logic train. That's not the, the end of humanity. That's like saving humanity. I know you, you're not a fan of lawyers. I'm a family of lawyers, so we, 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 we no love way. them. As, as I you love know. lawyers. We well, all love lawyers. You can't even get the right answer. <laughs> I love lawyers when you need one. Yeah. Right? I just don't like the business cards thrown at the ambulances. The magnetic. Uh, I, I, I do that? think that I do think the criminal defense lawyers are going to be okay for the record. So those ones will be all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. And will business they, is up. Well, yeah. Well, they, the business will be up. Will they have to be protecting the folks? That's the interesting part. Who's going to be responsible for all of this? So when AI goes crazy, you need a lawyer. You someone's going to need a lawyer, and it's not uh, you know the computer. So.